<sighs> All right. Here we go again. Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson, and this is my review for Terminator Dark Fate, which is the sixth Terminator movie overall, but chronologically, it is the supposed true sequel to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. The tagline for this movie is, Welcome to the Day After Judgment Day. And this movie takes place a couple decades after Terminator 2. We have this young woman named Danny who has become a new target for a new model of Terminator that was obviously sent from the future, and then somebody else was sent from the future as well to protect her. This woman named Grace, who is not a Terminator, but an enhanced human, which is something we've never seen in this series, so that's something new. And in the middle of all this, we get the return of Sarah Connor. Not just Sarah Connor, but Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. So the Terminator series has not really had the best string of luck ever since the first two. The first movie is a classic. It is one of the most defining movies of the 80s in terms of the action genre. And with Terminator 2, it's one of the best sequels ever made and one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. I absolutely adore Terminator 2. Terminator 3 maybe isn't as bad as I made it sound in my review because it's definitely an excellent action movie if you look at it just by action, but it's the same chase movie as the last two movies with nothing really new to offer. Terminator Salvation is the only movie in the franchise that actually attempted something different. And it might not have been a good movie, but at least it tried. Terminator Genesis, however, is the worst of the series in my opinion. It is a functionally stupid movie. It's poorly written, it's poorly directed, it's just a boring Terminator movie when you get right down to it, and it's, yeah, it, it's a very special kind of bad. Okay, maybe not as bad as something like Battlefield Earth, but you have to have a special set of skills to make a Terminator movie that is worse than Genesis. And luckily, Terminator Dark Fate is not that movie. Is it the best Terminator sequel since Terminator 2? Personally, no, but it's definitely a better Terminator sequel than what we got before. First of all, this movie's a big deal because it marks the return of James Cameron as a producer this time. This is the first Terminator project that he's been involved with since Terminator 2 and Terminator 2 3D Battle Across Time. So it's exciting to really have him come back to the series, even though he made that glowing endorsement for Terminator Genesis, which... That hurts me. That endorsement really hurts me inside. But anyway, not only is he back, but we also have the return of Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. And it's in the vein of how they got Jamie Lee Curtis back for last year's Halloween, where you didn't really expect this actress to come back, but she did. And for my money, Linda Hamilton does a very good job. I mean, she's excellent in Terminator 2, but here, while she's not as good as in T2, she definitely gives us an older Sarah Connor, who is clearly been living a rough life, so she just spends her days going around the world hunting Terminators and trying to stay off the grid because she's wanted in all of the United States. So it's really great to see Linda Hamilton come back, and for her to be as physically fit as she is, is pretty impressive. Like, she handles the action scenes very well. And the overall action in this movie is actually exciting. Not only is it very well done, but the sound design is definitely beefed up more than in the last movie. You feel the impact of every car crashing, you feel the impact of every sound the Terminators make, you feel the impact of every shot fired from a gun. The action's exciting, and you gotta give credit to Tim Miller, who also did Deadpool and delivered some really badass action scenes in that movie as well. Now in terms of the other characters, you have Mackenzie Davis as Grace, the enhanced human that comes back from the future to pretty much protect this girl, Danny. And I've never seen Mackenzie Davis before, but she actually impressed me quite a bit in this movie. Her character is like if you gave Kyle Reese the super soldier serum, because there's not a whole lot different between her character and Kyle Reese. But I thought Mackenzie Davis did a really good job, not just as an actress, but in terms of the physical stuff as well. And a lot of people have said that she should have been Carol Danvers. I'm happy with Brie Larson still, but I could see her as Carol Danvers, definitely, because she's 
Again, very good at the physical stuff, and she's got the hair for it. And of course, you can't have a Terminator movie without Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold Schwarzenegger actually isn't in the movie a whole lot. He actually gets second billing next to Linda Hamilton, and he's not featured prominently on the poster the way she is, or the way he was in the last movie. But what they do with him this time around, I actually liked. I wasn't the biggest fan of the way his character was in Genesis, even though he was the best part about that movie. But with this movie, they actually pull back, and I really like what they did with him. Now, despite all that, despite the praise I give for this movie, it's still not great. I mean, the action's fun and all that, but the biggest problem with this movie for me is the script. It's the exact same chase movie all over again. And would it kill the Terminator series to come up with something at least refreshing and different. Like I said before, Mackenzie Davis's character Grace is pretty much Kyle Reese. When it comes to Natalia Reyes's character Danny, she's good. I think the actress did a fine job, but her character is not that interesting. And at the end of the day, she pretty much becomes John Connor 2.0 in the same way Grace was Kyle Reese 2.0. And then with Sarah Connor, while Linda Hamilton is very good, when you get to the third act of the movie, she's kind of reduced to a background character, to the point where I kind of forgot she was there. There is some terrible dialogue here and there as well, and the actors try their best to deliver it as convincingly as possible. The actor who probably does the best job delivering some of the bad dialogue is Schwarzenegger, because he's the king of that. But at the very least, I will say this. The line, come with me if you want to live, they do have a character say that line, but it's not said word for word exact, so I didn't even think about it, and it was almost refreshing to hear somebody say that line, but with different words. Similar to how in The Last Jedi, where BB-8 was the one to say, I have a bad feeling about this, but then you also have Linda Hamilton saying, I'll be back, which, can we stop with that line in these Terminator movies? I know it originated in Terminator, but that line has become so deeply rooted in Schwarzenegger movies beyond Terminator that I don't think anyone should be able to say that line but Schwarzenegger. And then the last thing about the movie is something that's really going to make it or break it for you, and from how the internet's reacting, because it's the internet, it's going to break the movie. I can't say what it is right now because it would be a legit spoiler. So I'm going to do another video on this, talking about this one specific moment and how I feel about it. And with how I feel about this moment, I ultimately have to say watch at your own risk. It's a fun action movie, no question about it. It's exciting, and I do end up liking these new characters, despite the fact that they're clones of pre-existing characters. But again, the script is not that great. They kind of throw Sarah Connor out the window in the third act of the film. And again, I'm just tired of the same movie being done over and over again with these Terminator movies. Terminator 2 made it work because the selling point was that Arnold Schwarzenegger was the good guy. Terminator 3 barely worked, but had enough really badass action to overlook that problem. Terminator Genesis tried that same thing again, but did not work at all. This movie did the same thing again and worked slightly better, but after the fifth time of doing the same chase movie, I'm done. I'm sick of it. That's ultimately why I have to say watch at your own risk. It's fun, sure, but it's the same plot again. That's why I feel like Salvation is the best Terminator sequel after 2. While it's not a particularly good movie and this one might be a little better, Salvation at least did something different. It was a different movie, all things considered, and... It does something else that I can't talk about because it would spoil an element of this movie. So later this week, I'm going to be doing another video, but for right now, I'd say watch your own risk. And there you go. That's my review for Terminator Dark Fate. And now I want to know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? And if you have seen the movie, please don't say what the spoiler is in the comments, just in case there are people watching who haven't seen the movie yet. Just save that until we get to the next video. But whatever your opinion may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course, leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media. And until then, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.